Okay then my friends, we have covered quite a lot when it comes to Codex now. We've seen how Codex Cloud runs remote tasks in isolated containers. We've used the Codex CLI to work locally on a project and we've also used the Codex extension to work both locally and to trigger remote tasks as well. On top of that, we've seen how Codex can review pull requests directly on GitHub. Before we finish the series, I wanna quickly show you one of the big benefits of using the Codex Cloud and that is that we can fire off multiple tasks at once to all run in parallel with each other. We don't have to just run one task at a time and wait for each one to finish. We can run four, five or more tasks at one time if we want to. And each of these tasks will have their own isolated container that they run within. So they're not going to be stepping on each other's toes. Now, the only thing to think about when it comes to running multiple tasks at once is the possibility of conflict when it comes to merging a few of those features one after the other, because each task could edit the same lines of code, theoretically. But if your tasks are working on entirely different features, that possibility will be much lower. So then, to demo this, I'm actually going to start by asking Codex a question, which I'm going to paste in, and it says, can you look at the code base and suggest three different reusable UI components we can make for the project as three different tasks on Codex? Then I'm going to hit the Ask button. Now, when I do this, Codex will look at the project code and it's going to come up with three ideas. So again, I'm going to pause the recording right here while it does its work and then I'll start up again when it sends an answer. All right, so this is finished and it's come up with three different ideas for me. And look at this. Each idea has its own little button right here to start that task, which is really nice. Codex basically generates a prompt for us to have it make this particular component in each case. So the first one is to create a hero section component. The second one is to create a pair card component for lists. And the third one is something to do with the tag inputs on the form. Okay, so yeah, we have a tag input with a really unique behavior where we add those pills, right? So it's basically saying we could extract that into a tag input component. So let's fire off all of these tasks concurrently by clicking on each one like that. And when we do that, if we go back to the dashboard, then we should see all three of those tasks now right here. So it's working on each one independently in its own container, but they're all going on at once. So it would be hard for me to do this locally, even with AI. I'm sure there would be ways to do it. However, right here, it's really easy for me to just fire off three tasks all at once. All right, so it looks like two of them have finished. So we could click on one of these and we could take a look at the code. Sometimes it seems to leave a little snapshot of what it's done. I guess in this case, we didn't really need to because we're just refactoring and putting things in their own components. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could go through the code and we could create a PR for this. And then we could go back over here. We could look at this one. Was it this one or was it this one? Not quite sure. Okay, this one as well, yeah. So we could create a PR for this one as well. And then we could go back over here. It's still working on this task, but you get the point. You could go in there, create a PR for that. You could preview everything locally if you wanted to again in your local workspace. And then you could go ahead and review the code on GitHub, merge it and all that kind of jazz. So this is one of the really good things about Codex. I can just spin up tasks from anywhere on my phone, on my laptop. When the thought comes, I don't have to be even in my code and I can have these different tasks running in parallel. Then I can just come back at a later point in time, review the code, test it out and then merge it into the repo if I want to. All right then, so I just want to finish this series with a few words about Codex and agentic coding in general, really. So first of all, when it comes to using Codex locally with the CLI tool and the extension, I would say that it is still very much a work in progress. And I would expect plenty of changes over the next months because I definitely think the experience could be smoothed out a little bit, especially when it comes to the connection with the cloud service. Secondly, when it comes to Codex Cloud, I would say the main selling point for me is that I can spin up remote tasks from anywhere and I can spin up multiple tasks as well. I don't have to be working on my project locally to fire those tasks off. I could just do it from my laptop or my phone when the ideas hit me. I can run multiple tasks and multiple variations of those tasks, which get to work while I'm not working. And then I could just review them and bring them down to my local workspace when I'm back at my desk. So that's nice. Thirdly, I would say that no matter what AI tool or coding agent that you use, always check the work that it produces and stay in the loop. AI can get things wrong and it sometimes takes me three or four iterations of different prompts to get the results that I want. Much like I might nudge a junior developer in the right direction a few times if they're going off track. 
And finally, I would say this, do not over rely on AI to code everything for you. I personally think it's really important to keep your manual coding skills and your knowledge of the field fresh and over reliance on AI to write all of your code will definitely hamper that. I think at the start of 2025, a lot of AI experts predicted that by the end of the year, AI would be writing virtually all the code that we produce. Well, that certainly doesn't feel true right now to me. And I don't think it's going to be true over the next several months either. Besides, even if AI does start writing all the code, you should still understand the code it generates in order to review it, debug it, and adapt the code. And essentially, you need to know how your application works. So for that reason, I think continuing to code manually and learning new skills yourself is especially important these days. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here. And for that, like I said, you get access to every course without adverts, without YouTube adverts. You also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else. You get access to my premium courses on Udemy and also early access to all of my YouTube courses as well. So the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this series and I'm going to see you in the very next one. <laughs>